So I have been shooting with the Sony a7S III for a couple of months now, and it is for sure one of the most powerful hybrid cameras out there at the moment. But without a doubt, the true power comes from getting your settings dialed and customized to improve your workflow. Today, we're gonna go through how I set up my Sony a7S III and how I think you should as well. Let's get into it. Yo, sub squad, welcome on into the channel. My name is Kyle Mishna. I'm a landscape photographer and YouTuber based here in San Francisco, California. On this channel, I talk you through how to use a camera. So if you haven't subscribed already, I'd very much appreciate that. That would be cool. As I mentioned off the top today, we are talking about the Sony a7S III, the best settings to use, the best custom buttons to use, how I have mine set up, how I've been using mine for the last few months now. Most of it is going to be video focused, but because I am a hybrid shooter, there's gonna be a few things in here that are camera focused as well. So I'm gonna try to run through this thing as fast as possible. I'll leave timestamps for everything and a little outline so you can skip around as you see fit because there's some of these videos that are like 45 minutes long. Not that those are bad, but I wanna make this quick and easy for you. Okay, so first things first, if we are in movie mode and we go to image quality and file format, this is where we can see our image quality settings. And this is honestly pretty confusing. There's XAVC HS, there's XAVC S, and there's XAVC SI. So now what do these letters mean? These are basically ordered from smallest file size to largest file size. They're also basically ordered from the lowest quality to highest quality with XAVC SI, the highest quality format. The bottom SI is the new all intra format. This is probably way more than you need, so I would recommend not using it. The XAVC HS is the new H.265 file format. And while this is the smallest, it is also the most compressed, which then therefore is the toughest on your machine to handle. So unless you have a nice, easy to use proxy system setup, I would recommend against using that file format. I personally stick with the XAVC S because it's a good balance between file size and easiness to edit, and it's still pretty high quality. Once we have chosen our file format, we can go into movie settings. This is where you're gonna set your frame rate. This is also where you will set your recording settings. I always stick with the highest bit rate and 422 10-bit. Another thing that is super important to set up is your custom mode dials. You have one, two, and three, and I, like most people, use this to swap between frame rates. I personally have this set to 4K 24 frames, 4K 120 frames, and 4K 60 frames. If I set the camera into custom function number one, it will automatically set my shutter speed to one over 50. It will automatically set my picture profile to S log three. I'll have 24 frames per second, 422 10 bit, and everything is good to go from there. Same goes with custom function number two. It will automatically set my shutter speed to one over 250. Custom button three will switch it to 4K 60 and switch my shutter speed to one over 125. Basically what you need to do is set up all of your settings as you want them for that individual saved profile to be set for, and then you go ahead and set it. Next, we of course have all of our custom buttons. So we have C1, C2, C3, all these different buttons that you can program to do whatever it is you want. If we go down to our briefcase, go into customize operation, let's start with our movie custom key settings. So first and foremost, I have the wheel set to ISO. The AEL button I have set to my picture profile. Number three, the AF on button I keep as is. C1 or number four on the menu, I have set to the focus area. C3 on the other side here, I have set to my zebras. And the trash can C4, I have set to my touch operation select. So this will turn on, off and on the touch screen if I want to make sure that I'm not accidentally touching the screen at some point. Moving down to the second page here, I have the clicking of this little nubby guy is my focus standard. What that will do is it will set the autofocus point back to the center. So if I've moved it over, I can just click that really quickly and it'll go back to the center. Clicking this center button will do the focus magnifier. You can punch in really quickly and grab focus and then punch back out and make sure that you are nice and locked in and focus. The left button I have set to my monitor brightness. So if I ever need to change from manual to sunny weather mode, the right button, which was normally ISO, I have set to white balance so I can very quickly set the white balance. And then number five on the down button here, I have set to clear image zoom or just zoom. And the important thing to know about clear image zoom is this camera, the Sony a7S III, unlike other Sony cameras, cannot do a crop ASPC mode when filming in 4K because the sensor size is the exact same size as 4K, so there's nothing to crop in on. But you can do that clear image zoom, and if you just quickly step up, 
you can get 1.5 magnification and step down if you need a little bit of extra reach, which is especially helpful if you're using a prime lens. The red movie button I still have set to record and C2 I have actually set to my finder monitor switch. So if at any point I don't want my body being in front of the eyepiece to switch seeing on the screen. So I have set my C2 button to switch back and forth between the screen and the viewfinder. So it's never doing it for me when I don't want it to. Lastly, I have my focus hold button set to autofocus. And because I am a hybrid shooter, I do have custom key settings for photo mode as well. So if you want to hop in here, I still have the wheel set to ISO. The AEL button instead of picture profile, I have set to the drive mode. So if I want to quickly switch into burst mode, for example, I just can quickly hit that AEL button. I can change a self timer. I can do a bracket very, very quickly. The AF on button I have kept to AF on. The C1 button I have changed to the focus area. This one is super, super helpful. If you want to do a zone autofocus, for example, you can stick with the zone autofocus. If you want to do a flexible spot and you want to really tap in or dial in that area that you are focusing, you can do so there. C3 I have set to focus mode. So if at any point I want to switch to autofocus continuous or manual focus, I can just quickly go ahead and press that C3 button. As I mentioned on the other settings, I also still have my trash can set to turn off and on the touch operation. Center nub I have still selected for the focus standard, so that centers your focus point. The center button here is focus magnifier again. Monitor brightness is still on the left. White balance is still on the right. And as I mentioned, you can do ASPC mode in photo mode, which will pretty drastically crop in. Uh, you're getting down to like, I think eight megapixels. So definitely not gonna be printing out that photo if you were punching in, but in a pinch, you can go ahead and do so. For the top two settings, I've left these the same. So movie shooting and that finder monitor select is my C2. And as I mentioned, the focus hold button on the side here is set to my autofocus. I find this to be super helpful if I'm vlogging, for example, and I can just very quickly press this to make sure that I have locked onto my face really fast. Going into the function menu, if you click this function button here, I haven't changed too many things here. Top left, I have my audio record level. So whether or not I have a mic plugged in, I can very quickly change my audio. I can turn peaking on and off. Sometimes I'll change my focus mode. Face priority in autofocus can be really helpful to turn on and off if I know that I'm not going to be wanting to track a subject, but there is a subject in the frame, for example, I can turn that off very quickly. Uh, changing the active or standard steady shot. You'll notice that in active steady shot mode, we do get a little bit of cropping in. The active steady shot, honestly, I've been very, very impressed with in my uses. It's not quite gimbal level, but it's it's pretty good. The reason that I sometimes have this really quickly accessible within my function menu is sometimes I'll turn this off because when you turn it off, you can still record gyro data within the camera and then stabilize it later in Catalyst Browse. You cannot use the gyro data when doing the standard steady shot or active steady shot. Just important to know. Two other things that I like to have access to are my zebra levels. So if we want to change the threshold to say 95, I'll do that there. Having the gamma assist on can be super helpful when you're just kind of run gun composing, don't have time to do zebras and, and things of all of that nature. One other handy custom key setting that I do have set is for the playback settings here. I will set the C3 button to rating. When you have that rating option set, when you're reviewing your images, if you press this C3 button, it will automatically rate it. I have it set to rate with five stars. This way, then when I bring it into Lightroom, it's much easier to do my selects because those stars will then carry over to Lightroom rating. The key is you have these set up for whatever it is that's most comfortable for you and you get very used to pressing them to save yourself a ton of time. In addition to having all of your custom buttons and your function menu set up, there's a few other quick little tricks that you should be using as well. The first of which is setting a red box around your screen when recording. So if you go into the menu on the first page, scroll down to number 10 here, shooting display, and then emphasis during record, set that to on. And then what this will do is when you hit that record button, you'll have a nice red box around your screen to very quickly understand that you are in fact recording. Another very nice one is the AF transition speed. So if you go into your autofocus settings and then go into AF transition speed, I personally like four or five, nothing too, too crazy. 
and then I like to set the sensitivity to responsive. What this will do is when you're racking focus, it will be pretty responsive in its rack focus. While we're on the topic here, the touch to autofocus can be nice if you are just doing a pure rack focus. It will rack from one spot to the next and then it will stay at that particular focus spot. Whereas the touch tracking will create that box that is then tracked no matter where you move. You can go ahead and make sure that you have that set up at the onset under the briefcase here, go under touch operation and touch function in shooting. You can change that from here, or you can just change it by tapping that little icon there on the screen. Another important one in your autofocus menu is going into the peaking display. This will only matter if you're in manual focus, but you can change your peaking display to on. I like to set the level to high or mid, and then you can change your color from red, yellow, blue, or white. Red is typically the easiest to see. We can see that that red line will show us what is in focus versus what is out of focus. And for things that I don't have a assigned button set up for that I'm using a little bit less frequently, we can go up to our star menu here. And there's a few very small things that I have this set for. Uh, the first is AF with shutter. So what this will do, I don't typically use the half press shutter as my autofocus. I like to use the back button autofocus personally. However, there are a lot of times when I'm handing my camera to someone else and it's way easier to instruct them to do a half press full press to do autofocus than to press the AF on button and then take the shot. Also in my, my menu, I have the file format setting there. So if I do wanna quickly switch it to all I for some reason, I can go ahead and do that. Another handy one that is in my, my menu setting is the interval shooting function. So oftentimes I'm using this camera as my time-lapse camera and I'm using the A7R 3 as my main photo camera when I'm out just taking photos. So I can very quickly set up a time-lapse here. You can select a number of shots, set the interval shooting to on. You should be using aperture priority mode. So if you just swap over to A on the top here, that will then ensure that your exposure is not changing over time. And the only thing that will adjust is your shutter speed as the conditions change for the sunset, for example. All right, guys, that is it for today's episode. I hope you are able to use all of these shortcuts and keys and things to improve your workflow on your A7S III. If you did like this video, go ahead and play thumb more at the like button. Subscribe if that's something you haven't done already. I'll see you guys in the next episode. A landscape photographer and YouTuber here in San Francisco. You'd think I'd get that by now. I personally stick with the XAVCS because it's the highest. <sighs> These letters are very difficult to say. You start dialing in those custom buttons and you're flying through your videography in no time. No, that is stupid.